Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about doing shiny black leather. Uh, I'm painting my way through some witch elves and I thought other people might be doing so as well so it seems like a great time to talk about doing some shiny black leather as it often comes up on these girls. Uh, now, one of the great things about these models is that they have these big leather boots that are very dynamically posed. One of the problems with these boots is that we like to paint them in black, and black is a very challenging color to paint. First of all, it's very difficult to shade. If you're actually painting in true black, you can't go any darker. Secondly, black is very responsive to the type of material. Uh, the difference between black cotton and like a black leather that has a high level of sheen, the amount it reflects of the light around it is significant. So what we're gonna do is today is try to sketch out our reflection and show how we actually catch these highlights and make it look like it's got a nice leather sheen on it, okay? So what I've done here is I've done some work on this girl, but this is just a quick airbrush base coat of some black, okay? Um, if you don't have, you know, an airbrush and you're doing this, you would just put a thin layer of your of black on. Think of it like one thin coat of black. You don't need me to tell you how to base coat. You can do it. The paints we're going to use today are these guys. A little glossy black, a little Fantasy and Games Despair green, and a little Fantasy and Games Moonray Flesh. Now, this middle color here is not super important. And what I mean by that is you can use a dark green, a dark blue, a dark purple, a dark red. This is meant to be the highlight color, or sorry, the reflection color, I apologize. This is the color that the leather is reflecting from the environment around it. In this case, I'm gonna use the green because that's these girls' secondary color, it's their pop color. Um, as you can see, she, her hair has that same green in it. So we're gonna bring that down into the leather. Now, the glossy black is very interesting. This is, a, this is a neat color from Vallejo Model Color. If you don't have a glossy black, it doesn't really matter. You can use a regular black and mix in a little gloss varnish or satin varnish or gloss medium or satin medium. You can use just a straight black on its own. Lots of paints have a slight satin sheen to them as they are, so they'd be fine. Um, you might ask, well, Vince, why don't we just paint the whole thing in glossy black and call it a day? Well, you could certainly do that, and that's fine. Uh, but then you're giving up all control of the light, and it's not really going to reflect properly. It's going to reflect like a leg that's a quarter inch long or a half inch long, not like a leg that is, you know, a foot and a half long. The scale difference means that using straight gloss doesn't really capture the light properly. I'm using a flesh instead of a white because this is a little softer. It's going to blend a little easier, and that's going to come in handy for us. So, let's move these to the side. Let's bring her back in. Okay. Now, this model's great because it has this nice long knee here. And what we can do is we can draw our highlights straight toward here. So let's take a look at our palette. We've got, there we go. We've got some of our green, our black, and our flesh. This is some Payne's Gray FW Blue Black. Uh, that, in other words, that is this stuff right here. Um, that's there just in case we want to smooth something out at the end. What we're going to do is we're going to get into a little bit of our green, mix it over here, grab a little bit of our glossy black. And we're just going to make a nice little combination of them. Doesn't matter exactly who, how. I'm just getting close. I want it to be dark, more black than green, but it doesn't need to be perfect. And I'm going to add some water to it. I want it to be nice and flowing. Okay. Now, because these are scale 75 and they're pretty pigment dense, I don't have to use thinner or anything like that. Uh, like a glaze medium, you certainly could. Um, if you're working with paints that aren't as pigment dense, you may want to do that. So I'm just mixing it in. Now I got a nice color. Great. Then what I'm going to do is take my paper towel and I'm just going to wick off the excess. Now I'm not pushing my brush in. I'm just running it along to get the excess off. Then the final step, sorry, final step is I'm going to go into my flesh here and I'm going to get a little tip of that paint, just the tiniest amount on the tip. 
because we're going to do some loaded brush. So now, what I'm going to do is just I'll whip off a little bit of that, a little too much flesh there. Start at the paint point I want the highest highlight, which is here at the knee. I'm going to drag it back up to that line and then sweep it back. And as I go over each layer, very slowly down, I'm pushing a little harder and drawing a little bit more of that green black up into the brush. Okay, so what we get is a nice soft transition. Now if we want to do it again, we can always run it a second time again. We'll start down here. And we go down there. Now what we get is this nice transition. We can do it on the other side too to match. Let's get a new brush full of our dark color. Wick off the excess. Then we grab a dab of our flesh. There you go. Yeah, you can see that reflection nice and strongly there. That's a good angle. And you can see I'm using the side of the brush now and just drawing it back and forth. Right down into there. So what I get is a nice thin line of that reflection. Right? And then I can let that dry completely. But right there, we could stop. It's just that easy. Like, I can have my reflection line. I have a little bit of that. Like, that's got a good sheen to it. If we want to go a little farther, though, we can take a little bit of our flesh tone, thin it down. You notice that still looks white. Like, you know I'm not... I'm sorry. You notice that still looks white. I am not using white paint. This is flesh-colored paint. The trick is, because it's against black, it's going to seem very white. So then what I can do is I just take a nice thin glaze of this flesh, and on each side, I just run a little line, just like that. Just a little smooth glaze right up the edge. Just one. And that softens that line right out. So now I have a bit of a softer fade of that. Just even smoothing out the loaded brush farther. Okay. Now, with these other areas down here, these other highlights, I can do the same thing. I just do it over a smaller space. That's our main sort of reflection line. Sorry. But we can do it other places too. So I can go back into my dark color paint, get a nice brush load there, wick off my excess, grab a little bit of my flesh. Now, I've got like the top of the heel here, this little nubbin, top of her leg, there's a bend right there. Right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of force a little of that paint up in there by using my hand. And then very slowly, every time I push it, sorry, every time I push it back on my thumb, I'm drawing it like this to draw the other paint forward. getting that darker color to mix down in there. And then I can just repeat it one more time to really make sure I've got those nice and smoothed out. I can just little one there, brighter spot there, there, maybe the top there. And then I draw a little forward. Draw it out. Right? And now all of a sudden, I've got these very bright reflections. Now, 
if I want to soften them, if I feel like I went too far, I can go back into that original tone, thin it down a whole bunch into a glaze. So I'll show you over here on my palette what I just did. See that area right there? Nice and thin. And then what I can do is I can just run it right in there along the edge, hit a little bit of that highlight, and just smooth that back out. If I feel like I want to reinforce or soften the line, sorry, soften the line between the two, I can do the same thing with the flesh, just like I did last time, make a little glaze out of my flesh tone. So just like you just saw me with the consistency, and then I can come in and just very softly along the edge, draw the paint up, draw the paint toward the light, toward the light, All right? And what I get is these nice reflections. I think that looks pretty cool. But we can, but we now, every light casts its own shadow. That's where we go to our glossy black. Where I like gloss is in the dark. Wet, if you've ever noticed that something looks different than it's when it's wet, than when it's dry, if it seems, if the color seems more intense, that's because gloss just seems darker. I honestly don't know the scientific reason for it. I just know that it's true. So what I do is I take a little bit of my glossy black and here on the lower areas, out of the light, down here on the bottom where, there, where the model won't be exposed, under this leg up here. In these areas, I run my glossy black in there. That way what I get is a real nice solid contrast. So the darker part actually has the sheen and the lighter parts, I've created the light. And then what I get when I look all over the, the leg here is a nice reflection of that. If you feel like you want to take this part down, like if this didn't, if this is too bright or too broad, your initial highlight, which is always possible because you want a nice thin highlight, then guess what? We can take a little thin glaze of our black or glossy black or black with medium in it or whatever we happen to have. And we can just run it right along there. And we just darken it right back down. Right? Same with your line itself. If you feel like the line itself is too broad, too long, you don't want it that long, no problem. Grab a very thin glossy black or our darkest black color. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here on the side of the leg and I'm gonna sweep up toward the line with a glaze. Very gentle. See how that just moved a little bit, but look at how now we have this nice soft transition going down the leg. Just that one simple glaze. Okay. So there's lots of options for ways we can go from here. If you wanted to reinforce this and take this to the next level, I would just build out a few more glazes, have a nice thin hard line here uh, that leads out to that, you know, soften it, whatever. Just basically repeat the steps you already saw me do. But that's basically it. Just like that, we can get our glossy leather. It's a quick, simple process. It's good for doing things like a large army. That quick loaded brush can be a real advantage and time saver with this because you've got, you may have a lot of these girls to paint depending on the army that you're building. You may have a lot, a lot of these girls to paint. And, you know, sitting there and doing very subtle blending from black to white on 60 or 90 or 120 witch elves or sisters of slaughter or whatever probably not the most fun but there you go hopefully that helps for doing your shiny black leather there you go 
and that's what you end up with. Nice and simple, will look great across the table, will give the impression of that gloss transition without needing to actually do any, uh, w without needing to do too much work. So, there you go, I hope you enjoyed that very much. If you did, uh, give it a like, uh, that's always appreciated. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share this with somebody if you know they're working on some witch elves or are having some trouble with some black shiny leather. Uh, always, that's all, sharing is always the nice thing you can do and deeply appreciated. If you've got your own hobby cheating suggestions or things you'd like me to take you through in the future, please just uh, leave those down in the comments below. I always love viewer suggestions and I'm always happy to help. But as always, I appreciate you watching this and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.